Zostunian. Welcome back to another episode of Warframe. This isn't necessarily what's my layout, but I wanted to do a video because a really cool uh, bundle dropped, and there it is right there, the Arca Bundle. And this is, this actually has a lot of different things that a lot of people have been wanting for a pretty good while since they probably saw it at Tenocon, of all things. So, um, right now I'm going to tell you what it all comes with, um, just the bundle itself, if you guys are interested in just going in it for plat. If not, these items will be available in the energy portion of your um, dojo for research, basically the corpus section, because these are all corpus weapons, and they all have a mastery rank requirement of 10. Now, I will say that these weapons are worth it whenever you actually start seeing what they can do and the numbers. But, what it comes with are, is the Arca Plasmor, um, let's see, that should be the shotgun. The Arca Skisco, which is the um, sniper pistol that you can get, pretty nice. And then the Arca Titran, which is the hammer that you see there. But I'm going to give you a closer look at each three of the weapons, and then I'm going to go through in with Bolt having all of these weapons, because I think this is going to be my new layout for them. All three of these weapons are just too cool not to use. So, first weapon I'm going to show you is the Arca Plasmor. This is that badass corpus shotgun that we all got to see at Tenogen. It is finally here and it looks amazing. Like I love how big this thing looks and it has some numbers to back up its look. So um, what I've got it modded for, this only um, cost me one forma and of course it's potatoed. I got a prime point blank, hell's chamber, I have all well, actually, I have three out of four of the status um, mods. I'm missing one from my own um, collection, so, but I do have a replacement for it, so you'll see. So you have Shell Shock, Toxic Barrage, and Frigid Blast, and that brings it up to with um, the addition of Hell's Chamber, of course, because Hell's Chamber does give you some status. Brings it up to 96.6% .6 status chance, which is good enough for me. I mean, I, I think it's worth it. And... Um, I also have Seeking Fury because I wanted a little bit more reload speed on this weapon. It is a little bit slow to reload it, to be honest. You take a little bit of time. Um, the next mod that I have on is Blaze, which gives you 60% base damage plus 60% heat damage, which I think is a pretty nice combination of things. And if I don't have the Fire um, Dual um, Status mod, this is definitely what I would want to go with. I think it's um, I think it's a really good compromise. I don't think I'm really going to notice that 4.4% um, or 3.4% chance often enough to where it's going to bother me personally. And then I have Incendiary Coat to get one of my particular um, damage types up. Now here's the thing. This weapon with nothing is straight radiation damage. But that actually gives you a opportunity because if you take a look at how I have it set up, you can actually get three dual element um, types of damage on here. So I have blast, radiation, and corrosive with a 96.6% um, chance to actually um, cause status, which is great. This weapon is this weapon really surprised me. I didn't know what I was expecting from it, but like even the projectile type that it fires, which I'll show you guys in a minute, is really surprising. Like this weapon is freaking awesome. All of them really are. All right, so now this is the Arca Skisco, and this is actually a really interesting um, weapon in its own right too. I'm not really a fan of um, sniper-based weapons, but this isn't too bad because it's got a couple of hidden mechanics to it, and I'll go over the hidden mechanics um, to it whenever we actually get into the mission. But let's take a look at what everything looks like on paper. So basically what I've got right now is I've got hydraulic crosshairs because it'll give me a 135% critical chance while aiming for 9 seconds on a successful headshot. I'm probably going to replace this with... Um, with um, Prime Pistol Gambit here. And I know what you guys are thinking is like, oh, Stoney, you only have 18% crick chance. To the untrained eye and to the person who um, hasn't really used this weapon, 
yes. But whenever we get into the actual things that make this weapon tick, you'll see why I've done this. Let's see, next we have Barrel Diffusion, I've got Scorch and Frostbite to get that Blast Proc. I'm really liking uh, Blast Proc more and more as I use it, um, to be honest. Um, I also have Jolt and Pistol Pestilence to get me Corrosive, and with all those mods on there, I have a 98, 99.8% status chance, which is great. And just a little bit of hint of the hidden mechanic of this weapon, I definitely have no problem getting this weapon to 100% status chance. But also, um, I have Hornet Strike and Lethal Torrent, so that is that for that one. And now, I will admit this is kind of the most bland weapon of the trio but it does have its own little hidden um, thing to it as well. It's just I don't really see myself using it all that often. The Arca Titran. All right, so pretty um, pretty basic loadout. You do not have to um, form of this. By the way, for the last weapon that I did, um, the uh, sniper pistol that I just um, showed you guys didn't have to form of that either. This is, this is just having way too much mod space. So, um, I have Crushing Ruin, I have Condition Overload, because as you can see with all, with actually just three out of four of the dual stat mods, you can get to a 100% status chance. That actually gives you a little bit of wiggle room with certain things, and I'll show you what I did with that. For the dash polarity that comes with this weapon, I decided to put on Primed Heavy Trauma, it is, um, it may have some slash damage to it, but it's mostly impact, so, I mean, you're gonna go with what it's best with, so. I got Prime Heavy Trauma on there, I have Primed Pressure Point, and this is gonna seem a little bit redundant, but trust me, like, whenever you actually, like, try to run Berserker with this, you're gonna also want, um, because I'm running Berserker, and I have to be honest, it's just not enough because this weapon is slow to start off with even going into berserker like so i decided to put primed fury on there to give it a little bit more speed so that i could be enticed into using it more often so i could actually proc berserker so that's pretty much my um layout for that you get a pretty nice little chunk of damage on everything got uh, my blast right there got my toxic right there so yeah, pretty good weapons overall, and each one of them has something um, kind of special to it. And I guarantee you, if you're if you haven't seen um, the shotgun in action yet, um, you are in for a surprise. So let's go to let's see. Yeah, we're going back to Oxamoco because I. Whoop, hold on. I'm gonna make that into a solo run because I actually put the um, augment on for Volt for his fourth ability which will be able to help me tank this a little bit easier so I can get um, a big big increase to overshields but yeah for mastery rank 10 if you guys are wondering if it's really worth it to get up to this point for these weapons I have to say for each one of them, yes. The hammer's a little bit generic, but you'll see. Alright, so let's go ahead and use the um, Plasmor. Now, if you look at this, you would logically think that there's going to be some spread from each one of these little um, headers right there. You would be wrong. You would be dead wrong. Watch this. It's just a big freaking blast and it reaches really far and it hits really really hard it is oh my gosh it's so good it just blows crap away like this is my go-to bfg like i don't um i haven't formed up a um opticore enough to challenge um this weapon but in my opinion i think this is the biggest just like aim and kill weapon that I really have that has like a pretty wide radius too like that's the other thing is that this thing has a wide blast radius so you can hit a lot of stuff let's go ahead man. 
I don't know how I feel about that. But got all of them but one. That's pretty much the hidden mechanic of that. Um, there is no spread to it. It almost, it's almost just one big blob of radiation. And you know what? That's okay because that's kind of why I like Warframe is little unique weapons like this. And speaking of unique weapons, I don't mean to kind of go away from uh, from this, but let's go ahead and get to the Cisco. So, the unique mechanic about this is that as you actually get successful shots, you'll see over to the right hand side, you can actually increase your critical and status chance. And basically you have the diamonds there that are actually going to keep track of that for you on the screen. And that wheel that counts down, basically, whenever you don't uh, use it, will take, a, will take that back away. So basically, as long as you keep using this and you keep hitting as well, you'll be able to get an extra 20% to your critical chance and your status chance. So I'm definitely able to uh, proc um, status pretty much every time with this weapon. And that's why I want to um, put um, Prime Pistol Gambit on there, is because I want to see just how much of a critical chance I can get out of it with uh, that on there. Because it would be about 138 critical chance, or, or well, a percentage of critical chance, and then you put another 20 on there, so that's about 150. So that's about, I'm not sure, but it's a pretty good amount. If not, it's definitely a good status weapon. All right. So there we go. Yeah. Well, die. <laughs> yeah, a little bit harder to kill enemies um, with this. But then again, it is a secondary weapon. Let me go ahead and get myself, get myself some shields. All right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the big boy of this, the Titran. And like I said, this thing is pretty slow, and that's even with not quite a um, maxed out Prime Fury, but pretty close. The thing about it is, is that you can use um, Berserker with this because it has a 24% um, critical chance. It's just for some reason, I haven't been able to. There we go. Okay. There we go. So whenever you um, get that first level of speed, that is definitely enough to warrant that you just got to get that first critical spot. And now here's the hidden mechanic of, um, of the hammer, is that if you do a slam while you've been basically building up your damage with it, you can do, oh, hold on, hold on, you can do this. A AOE shot that channels a bunch of that damage into other people and it actually did kill somebody back there but the only thing though is that I couldn't see myself really using this all that often because I'm not sure if it's specific to the ground slam or if you can get some use out of it another way and I'm gonna show you guys that right now because I have crushing ruin on and you guys may know what I'm going for oh okay so I can do that. All right. So if you have a ground slam, um, heavy um, combo list like uh, Crushing Ruin, you can actually get use out of that. Um, get use out of that um, special ability of this hammer by using one of the combos that causes one of those slam effects. So, if you have Crushing Ruin, this is actually not too bad a hammer overall, if you if you really think about it, because you're getting slam damage, sure, but now, um, because of this hammer specifically, you're getting extra slam damage in addition to it, and I'm pretty sure that the slam attacks actually do knock enemies down, but this will actually keep them in place, so hypothetically, you could actually combine um, this effect with, um, let's see, with the Skisco, and while they're actually like all, oh my god, fucking, just like shocking in place, you can hit some headshots on them. But, um, also the Skisco, I think, um, 
is also another uh, weapon that probably you could use a pretty good bit with, um, what's his name? Hold on. Hero. Yeah, Hero. Because of um, his um, ability to um, get extra stats from uh, headshots and crits and everything like that. It would probably be a pretty, uh, pretty nice fit. Like, probably even more so than um, the secondary pistol that was introduced right around the same time that he was. I can't remember the name of it for the life of it. You guys all know what I'm talking about. I'm actually kind of surprised I'm doing this well on commentary, too, because I am a little bit sick. Um, it, it's not too bad right now, though. It's, ma it's mainly allergies right now because, you know, the, um, the weather has changed, like, very drastically. Because um, we are now actually starting to have cold, um, colder nights and um, like colder um, days, like whenever they start off. Because I get up, um, I get up pretty early, about um, like what is it? Probably about um, I get out of the house by like um, 7:20 or something like that, and it's still like. It's still, it's not chilly, but it's like cold enough to where you're like, oh, winter's coming, cool. <laughs> winter's coming. Mm. Alright, so this does take a little bit more to use whenever you're going up against heavily armored targets. But still, I think um, this is a great, probably um, just crowd destroying weapon, especially when it comes to... Um, just lower infantry, um, people that, like, like, yeah, yeah. No multi-shot, really. That's another thing, too. If you're, like, an ace shot with, um, pistols and stuff like that, this weapon, um, definitely has a pretty good rate of fire. You're gonna have to pull the trigger every time, though. So, if you're not that big a fan of that, you might not like it. I'm a pretty big fan of it. I like um, weapons like uh, the uh, Ekbosto um, whenever I was starting out. Basically, the um, feel of like firing a revolver off a whole bunch of times is such a cool thing. Speaking of which, um, DE, when are we going to get our Ekbosto Prime? I really want an Ekbosto Prime. I really want it. I think I know when it's going to come, though, um, because the next two female frames that we have on tap, um, to my knowledge, are uh, Mirage and Mesa, and I think that if we get the, um, I think if we get um, a uh, dual egg Vasto Prime, it'll probably be with Mesa. Which I don't know how I really feel about that, to be honest. Jesus, this weapon is, this weapon's falling off a little bit whenever it comes to that particular enemy, the Bombard. Hmm, it's odd, I'll have to take a look at that later, I don't know why that could be. Ooh, a little Cephalon charge. I will go ahead and do that because I have been trying to do little stuff like that every so often now. I have found two of the pointer. Cool. I don't know really what that's supposed to give you. I know that that's probably bad considering, considering that I'm Mastery Rank 20 now, and I still don't know what necessarily that does for you. But, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that I think higher level players, like, either they forget about or just haven't researched at all. And that's probably one of them. Like, you just know that... I think a lot of people know that, like, whenever they see them once, it's like, hmm, maybe I should just scan them. Because we already have a whole bunch of other stuff to research. We have weapon builds, we have mods, we have weapons, we have warframes, we have warframe configurations. All of that to put into account. By the way, I wanted to um, let you guys in on something um, to my loyal fan base who's been uh, really enjoying my content as far as warframe goes. I'm going to be introducing a new series here pretty soon. And basically the concept of it is going to be stuff that you can be doing while you're waiting for um, Planes of Eidolon to drop and it gives me a lot of material to work with and even if you're not that high a rank there's a lot of stuff that you can do especially if you're like a lower rank definitely getting that mastery rank up and everything like that that is gonna be 
definitely key if you want to uh, survive at night, apparently, because apparently those gigantic um, Eidolons are going to appear specifically at night. That's a cool sound for a freaking reload. So, since we actually got this Corpus um, themed pack out, I guess that either we're gonna get some kind of Grenier pack, or like, I think we're supposed to be getting um, a pump action shotgun here pretty soon. And I think that's actually Tenno technology that that's based around because it has kind of a wood finish and everything. All right, we got that maxed out. And by the way, that's something else is that I had all those mods on the ti um, on the titrate at level 29. So just to give you a little bit of indication, I still have even more mod capacity to go for that but overall um if you guys are mastery um rank 10 right now or above these weapons are pretty awesome each one of them has something of uh, unique to them i would recommend that if you're going to um try out the hammer the titran probably having crushing ruin on there to actually get those slams in the middle of combos and not have to worry about an aerial slam would probably help out. I'm not sure about the other hammer stance. I know that there's another one, but I don't know how many slams there are incorporated into its combos, so that's that's all I know. Um, also, as I was mentioning, um, the Skisco is another weapon that you can use alongside Harrow to get those criticals, those headshots, and everything like that, and you actually get rewarded at and the cool thing is you get rewarded as long as you hit somebody. You can keep up that 20% as long as you keep hitting something. It doesn't have to be a headshot. So as long as you hit something, you'll get rewarded, and you can keep that 20% um, status and 20% extra critical, jam uh, critical um, chance going as you use it. And then, what can I say? The Plasmor is a big freaking gun. It kills most stuff in one shot if not two and you can get three dual elements on it and speaking from experience with the staticor a weapon that you can get um, three um, dual elements on and if you can get it to a decent amount of damage you can just rip through stuff, like regardless of whatever element you put on, because at the bot at the end of the day, even though certain damage is good against certain enemies, damage is damage, and you're gonna rip through stuff like an insane amount. But that's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to know when the next episode is coming out. Like I said, new series coming out about what you can do. Um, while you wait for Eidolon to come out. And this is both for new and older players. Um, new players may get ideas. Old players may remember things that they may want to do. Um, but question of the day. What weapon have you seen either through TennoCon or from... Um, or from a past dev stream that still isn't out that you're really looking forward to. Personally, I'm looking forward to that um, pump action shotgun. It it's a classic style weapon that will be pretty. It'll be good. I'm I'm damn sure of that. I'm just wondering like what its focus is going to be. Is it going to be crit based? Is it going to be status based? Is it going to have any special mechanics like these weapons? Because, um. I think more the more weapons that we have like this that have these cool little effects and everything like that, the better. So that like no weapon really seems like it's the exact same. Each each weapon has a little something to it. Although the only thing that I could say about it is I don't know what they could do to make a pump action shotgun have a unique mechanic to it that's the only thing that i would say but that's my opinion on the matter let me know what yours is in the comments below and also on facebook and junk like that so thank you guys for watching this is us doing signing off Grr!